Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name's Chris and it's fantastic to have you back with us for another video. And in today's video, we're going to have a look at two news articles. And I guess I want to start a bit of a debate with everybody. So do let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. But these are what I believe to be two huge, huge threats to crypto. And my question really is, do, do, do they need to be threats at all? I mean, are there solutions out there that can resolve at least one of these big, huge, monstrous issues that we've got in the crypto space? Do let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. If you enjoy this sort of content, mash up the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, tap in that bell, selecting all the notifications so you never miss a video. Right, let's get down to the desktop. Okay, so we're going to start here, right? And this is uh, what I think is a potential issue for crypto at the moment. And uh, that is how um, centralized crypto is becoming. And I think we can see this largely in the actual charts at the moment. And the, uh, I guess, the manipulated movements within the markets, right? Now, if anybody is a trader, you would be experiencing the you know, the big candles going downwards uh, and then immediately recovering and going upwards. And all they're look, literally doing is, uh, you know, liquidity grabbing uh, because every single time somebody trades, they basically have their stop loss and that is visible. So, you know, you've got people manipulating the market and basically taking money out of uh, retail's hands, in my opinion. Uh, and that's just one form of centralization uh, playing out that we see on uh, an hourly basis, you know, and not even a weekly basis, an hourly basis, and probably even 15 minute basis uh, if you're a trader, maybe even on some of the smaller time frames. But, you know, we are seeing bigger institutions getting into to crypto. Uh, this is something that is needed for, I, I guess, the adoption of cryptocurrency. So it's, you know, it's positive as well as negative. The Ethereum blockchain has become more centralized for in a shift to proof of stake as 60% of the validators are managed by only four companies. Uh, again, this is just looking at Ethereum and looking at it from a different angle. But yeah, look, right, um, Ethereum has become very, very centralized. And, uh, you know, you had their foundation selling at the top, selling on retail you know, the, the, the same thing that is frowned upon when YouTubers do it, the foundation's done it twice that I'm aware of uh, when it comes to Ethereum. So, look, um, I'm not an investor in Ethereum. Don't get me wrong. I have some dust Ethereum, mainly for transaction, uh, you know, transaction fees for the likes of Link and so forth. Um, outside of that, I'm not a big fan. Now, do I think it's going to do well? Yes. Um, but it is very, very centralized. And we see other uh, forms of centralization with the likes of Solana um, being decentralized or the word, just the word decentralized uh, is a buzzword in this space. There's lots of um, projects or altcoins banding about the fact that they're decentralized when they are very, very centralized. Matter of fact, they can just flick a kill switch and turn off the actual blockchain. That's how... Um, centralized it really is right somebody has the control to turn the damn thing off so look um it's something that is and, and should be an eye-opener for for people in the space so how do we combat that let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below but it does get worse my other thing that i would like to highlight uh, and many of you will be aware of this already is the amount of hacks that we've seen, particularly with uh, bridge hacks being you know, a prime example, Harmony being uh, an, an example of a hundred million dollar hack. We recently had the Binance um, hack as well. Um, again, don't really know the accurate figures for that, but possibly over 500 million dollars uh, for that one but the total combined uh, looting is over three billion dollars um, just take that in for a second and my question that I pose to everybody really is do we even need to have three billion dollars worth of hacks and I think the answer is no no we don't and uh, I'm interested to get your views and opinions on what could we do 
as communities to encourage, I guess, collaborative working within blockchain technology? And I mean, more than we've already got, because I think that there is a solution already. And uh, I think there's more than one solution. But I'm going to give you one solution. And uh, again, it's a project that I think is massively undervalued, right? And uh, that would be lossless. Now, lossless, um, you know, uh, uh, already, you know, adding huge value to, to the space, in my opinion, restoring trust in web free security and uh, lossless incorporates a new layer of blockchain transaction security protecting selected projects uh, and their communities from malicious exploits and associated financial loss uh, and that is in their words now these guys can support with bridges right we've even seen them partner with bridge network bridge network partners with lossless to integrate hack mitigation tool for bridge creators so we see all of these hacks that are happening on bridges but we have a solution already. So um, interested to get your views and opinions. Uh, if we see hacks moving forward on bridges, I do question the integrity of the teams of the projects that you know uh, get hacked moving forward when there is solutions out there to stop this from being something that happens in the space. Partner up, build together, work collaboratively, that for me is the answer on this one. I am sick to death of seeing these, you know, uh, bad actors in the space, you know, be it influencers, you know, being paid to talk about shit coins, you know, and not, you know, declaring it and being straight and honest with people. You know, the, the influencers that have their best interests at heart only and don't care about their community, you know, the projects and their foundations that, you know, sell at the top on their communities you know, without any regard for, for the retail investors that got them to where they are today, the projects that get hacked, because, you know, there's solutions there. Let's work collaboratively. Let's find better ways. Uh, and all of this, for me, would improve the adoption rate of cryptocurrency, which is already, you know, as a technology, blockchain technology is already the fastest adopted technology in history but i think it could be faster and i think we could work more collabor uh, collaboratively and i think that resolves a lot of the issues that we have in this space get rid of the tribalism you know you know you like this project i like that project it doesn't matter you know we all like crypto there's there's a um i i guess a similarity to to why we're here we believe in the underlying technology some don't don't get me wrong some people are just here to make a quick buck those people will come, they will go. They're probably not even here right now. Um, but this is where generational level wealth is made. This is where, you know, projects should be watching videos like this and listening to their community. Are they doing that? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on all of this in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, mash up that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, tap in that bell, selecting all the notifications so you never miss a video. Let me know if you think this is crazy. I think it's crazy. We've got solutions to big, big problems, you know, $3 billion problems, and they're not being utilized. Let me know your thoughts. I'll catch you in the next